Good evening, church. Just uh, want to share a few words with you from Mark chapter 6 this evening. But I want to remind you, um, we're, we're marching towards Sunday. And I hope you're as excited about Sunday as I am. Sunday at 9 a.m., we're going to begin this lawn chair church. Not sure how long we'll be doing this. Might only be a week. It might be two or three. We're just not sure yet what um, what the plan is in the state of Florida and when um, phase two might begin. But we are excited. Sunday morning, 9 a.m., you meet us out there on the softball field. Bring a lawn chair, dress casual, bring some coffee. And uh, we're going to have just a time of worship together as the body of Christ. And and we'll promise to be there less than an hour. And we'll, we'll, we'll get off the softball field before it gets too hot. And also, if you're if you feel like you are uh, unable to be around a large crowd or you can't be outside, maybe um, you can pull up and park your car on the outside of the softball field, on the outside of the fence, and we should be able to transmit to your car by, via an FM transmitter. And uh, we'll, so we'll be having lawn chair church and drive-in church at the same time. And uh, there'll be ushers there that will help you get to your parking spot. And so you look forward to seeing that. So show up, um, show up and, and uh, just let's let's get together and worship and look, uh, look forward to that. Remember, Saturday at 9, we're going to have a little cleanup of the grounds. Just try to spruce a few things up and uh, make it look super good for on, our, on our campus, on our, uh, at our church ground. So but I want to read some scripture to you tonight from Mark chapter 6. Jesus went out from there, and he came into his hometown, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and the many listeners were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things? What is this wisdom given to him, and such miracles as these performed by his hands? Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary? Jesus said to them, um, A prophet... In, is not without honor except in his hometown and among his own relatives and own household. And he could do no miracle there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he wondered at their unbelief. And he was going around the villages teaching. So I just want to encourage you in this. I know there's a lot of you who are desperately um, wanting to see your family come to Christ and you're wanting to see some close friends of yours come to know Jesus and you're ministering and you're laboring and it's hard. Many of you uh, have probably have wayward children that maybe have left the faith or at least they're, they're uh, estranged or disenfranchised from the faith. And um, that's probably a deep burden for many of you. And I just want to remind you that, that even Jesus, even Jesus, when he goes home to his hometown, um, is not found to have honor there. And in fact, they don't even listen to him in his own hometown. Isn't this a carpenter's son? Isn't this Mary's son? And he's here performing miracles? And, and it's tough words. It says, and he could do no miracle there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he wondered at their unbelief. And I would imagine many of you, uh, if you're strong in your faith and you're a strong believer and you're trying to witness and love your family and you're trying to have those opportunities to, to help them be exposed to the gospel, you probably feel like this verse right here. You wonder. You wonder at their unbelief. Well, I would say this to you tonight. Don't give up. Remain faithful unto the Lord, love them, serve them, pray for them, keep sharing with them, and um, and we can find good and practical ways to do that. We can find good and practical ways to continue to love people and be kind to them and, um, and be gracious while we remind them of the message of Jesus. And we especially remind them of what Christ did in our life. That's the story that we have to tell. Uh, the story that we have to tell is that Christ changed us, changed us, supernaturally changed us, that there was a moment where we didn't know Christ and God worked 
and he worked in our hearts through grace and through mercy and um and now we are children of god and who would have ever expected that right well your story isn't different than what your family story could be and so i would just encourage you remain faithful i know that might be tough tonight might be tough. You say, Pastor, you don't know how long I've been praying for my child, or you don't know how long I've been praying for my neighbor that I love, or my brother, or my sister. And um, I would just say that it's tough to minister around those that know us best. And it's tough to attempt to witness and share with those that know us best. But the Lord has put you in your family for a reason. It wasn't just by accident that you are that pebble that was dropped in that pond to make some ripples, if you will, to make some waves. And, um, and God knew in his sovereignty exactly why he put you in your family. He knows why he put you in, his, in the neighborhood you're in, on the job site you're on. And, um, and he's got you there for a reason. And so we need to yield to the sovereign plan of God and be used and be obedient and that the, 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 um, the king will use us mightily. And so I just thought it would come along this evening in Mark chapter 6 and share those few words with you and encourage you to keep on keeping on. And again, look forward to seeing you on Sunday at 9 a.m. in the softball field. It's going to be a wonderful day. Wonderful time of worship and, um, and a wonderful time of singing. I'm going to be preaching from Philippians, and I'll post that passage that I plan on preaching from. I'll, I'll share that on Facebook and maybe tomorrow, and uh, that way you can read ahead and know where we're coming from. But uh, may the Lord bless you tonight, and uh, may the Lord keep you, and may and just, um, just you serve Him. And may you be a bright, shining um, light for Jesus in your families. So let's pray together. Father, I just pray for our people to be very faithful unto you, to serve you right where you've put them, right where you've placed them, that they may be, they may be kingdom, they may be gospel, they may be saturated with the truth, and they may in a loving way share a message with those around them. And Lord, I just am rem, uh, reminded of the fact that you put us right where you want us. You plant us in the soil that you want to plant us in. And we're there for a purpose. So use us. And I pray that these words might be encouragement to somebody who's, who's been um, graciously loving their son or their brother or their sister or maybe even their parent. And that you would use us as witnesses that we might come and uh, be part of the redemptive process as people hear the gospel and respond. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. See you on Sunday.